Well, I have now the, 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 the extreme pleasure of welcoming one of the vocalists who has made this Ojai Music Festival the extraordinary experience that it has been, and that is Aphrodite Patelidou, who is a Greek soprano. She trained in Greece, in Brussels, in, in Berlin. She has spent quality time in Paris. I know better than to ask too much about that. Um, besides being a soprano, she is also a composer, a photographer, and uh, a poet, a published poet, and um, a, a burgeoning filmmaker. So I don't even know how we're going to manage to reel this into just 15 minutes, but welcome to the hot seat, Aphrodite. Nice to be here. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us. I, I want to start as I start every conversation here at the desk by just asking you to describe your experience of Ojai. This is, this is your first time. It's my first time crossing the ocean. Really? Being here, yeah, it's amazing. It's, I didn't expect to be so spiritual. Spiritual I mean, I, in what sense? Like I'm, I'm, I'm staying two blocks away from the Krishnamurti Foundation. Mm -hmm. um, the, the nature, the people here, they're different. How so? Yeah, like, uh, <laughs> I don't know, I felt so welcomed. Mm -hmm. It was amazing, yeah, and uh, I saw a coyote for the first time. I mean, really? Yes. Oh, I'm amazed. jealous. Yeah, like where, where was that? On, on our garden. Wow, that that's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, again, we we were just chatting earlier, and I, I I mentioned the the notion of the birds here actually seem to be singing with and complimenting the music, and you can hear all of that from the stage. Oh yes, we can hear everything, and we can see everything from the stage. Uh, my first experience was uh, my control freak inside me went like, is this even right? Mm -hmm. But then I, I realized that this is more right than right can ever be. Wow, okay. It, I mean, the, the, the situation of being in a concert hall and creating the silence is something we do, but this is real. Right, This exactly. is out here and, and it's just natural and after a while you get used to it. It just feels right. Yeah, it does, it does. Yeah. I want to ask you about the Equilibrium Artists Program and particularly what it was that inspired you to apply for it and then what the situation was like, what you discovered when you became a part of it. Oh, I remember reading the announcement and I thought, this is too good to be true. Mm -hmm. but then, a, then a friend of mine said, but. It says here that Barbara is present during the, the whole audition process, so why don't you just go and meet her? Nice. That was my mentality when I walked mm -hmm. in the room. I, I didn't expect to be selected or anything like that. I thought, mm -hmm. well, I'm going to shake hands with this sacred monster. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but when I read that she's looking for people who are artistically curious, mm -hmm. and they're not only singers. Mm -hmm. and, and actually, what is a singer, after all? We must be curious. Well, to, to bring all that of what we bring on stage, we read, we, we, we go to, to shows, to theater, and we bring that all there. And, and you're a creator yourself. Yeah. And w when you do that, then you start being able to appreciate the, the works of art that you're about to bring on stage. Right. In, in a, different layers also. It helps a lot. So I, 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 I want to interject for a moment to ask you, where you were at career-wise when you made this leap to apply because Barbara made a big point in her Ojai talk of saying this is not sort of the, the conventional young artists training boot camp but it's very much meant for young professionals in the first seven to eight years of their professional career path. So where were you? I think I was a professional for two years already but it was still baby steps, mm -hmm. baby steps. And then suddenly it was Gothenburg Symphony Orchestra. <laughs> <laughs> and well, it was amazing. It was, it's larger than I thought. Okay, in, yeah. in, in, in what sense? What, what are the things that she has you do? Uh, well, first of all, it's a community. Mm -hmm. Being a part of the, the Equilibrium tribe, as I like to call tribe. it. Tribe, that's a great word, yeah, I'm gonna I mean, steal that. <laughs> yeah, uh, we, we did yoga on our retreats like every morning we were trained with friendly eyes by Jackie Reardon right, which, right. Which, which helps the mentality we so it's like we trained how to be together mm -hmm. it, it was I, I have never been so comfortable with a cast on stage when, when a, a colleague performs I'm like 
I'm there. I breathe with them because it just feels so good. We've been through quite a lot together. Well, I'm, I'm just curious about some of the, even just the sort of mundane practical, th how long is a typical day of activity, if there's any such thing as a typical day? Yeah, there's no such a thing yeah. as a typical day. I mean, I mean, you can be on rehearsing for 12 hours, right? or you may have the day off. Okay. And then you still study because you need to. <laughs> right, of course, of course. So, but, but you mean in the equilibrium, mm -hmm. yes. like when we did the retreats, mm -hmm. well, we would start the day, I think, around nine o'clock. And I thought that was Vivier. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh. So we start with yoga, then, then we have like 10 minutes off and then may, maybe work for three hours, mm -hmm. then lunch, then work for four hours. But we did stage the whole opera with Lina Spellbaum in two and a half days. Mm, okay. So that's quite fast. I, 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 I know you you had done a number of roles prior to that. Had you done Anna before you took on Rake's Progress with this no. tribe? So. I have to ask, and it's a it's a little bit of a, an obvious leading question, but you're stepping into a role that was in fact Barbara Hannigan's own first operatic role ever. What was that experience like? Were were you nervous about the prospect, and how did she sort of bring you into it? Well, it is my first major part, mm -hmm. and the first two days of work. She was there conducting mm -hmm. us, and I thought, this is not a YouTube video, it's really her. <laughs> and she's conducting me, and mm -hmm. I made so many mistakes, and it was not where I wanted to be. And mm -hmm. I, w I was constantly thinking in my head, oh, she, she knows the part, she has done it so many times. Mm -hmm. And then she said, she said, what's going on? And she said, are you, are you stressed because I have done this? And I said, of course. Ah. <laughs> but after that day, I, I, it started to work. Because, because she, she showed me that she has such a compassion, she understands. You know, she went a long way, but she never forgot her right. first days. Right. So now she can really feel our problems, she can see it. She, she understands before I, I can put it into words, what's my problem. Right. There's, there's an empathy there, and I think part of that is just because, she, as she explained again in her Ojai talk, she benefited directly from being involved with a number of strong mentors who really helped her and guided her. So there wasn't that sort of, I'm out of school, I'm a young professional, I'm flailing to find what the next step is. And it seems to me that so much of equilibri equilibrium is about building in that, that community to sort of instill your confidence and, and to remind you of who you are and how you got there in the first place. Yeah. And well, mentors are such an important thing, but I should say there are many mentors, mm -hmm. but there are not many receptive students, let's say. Mm -hmm. You have to be open. You do, you do. I you mean, I, I remember leaving some teachers, but while I was studying with these, with these people, I was open-minded and I thought, okay, I want to know their art. Mm -hmm. I meet many people who, who just want to, to listen to the words they already know or, or, or have someone just tell them what they already think about themselves. Sure, absolutely, absolutely. I have to say the, 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 the performance of Rake's Progress was so riveting and so beautiful. I mean, you, you gave a beautiful, beautiful performance of Thank the you. character, but I, I just, the, the part where I just was completely riveted was in, um, in, in No Word From Tom, where I suddenly realized, and this should have been obvious all along, but it's like a conversation with the bassoonist. So yes. you're really you working it? closely with the Ludwig players or with whatever orchestra you happen to be with. Yes, yes. Yeah, it's really remarkable. Now, talk about um, a, a, a light year away. Um, another piece with which Barbara was very, very closely associated, Claude Vivier's lonely child and I wonder about your experience of coming into the, did you know Vivier's music at all prior no. to you're right okay so what was it like to come into this very very particular piece yes well first thing I I did was listen to Barbara's recording mm -hmm. maybe I shouldn't have <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah I... but I remember sitting in my room thinking I need to do this piece mm -hmm. and I said yes and then I saw the score and I said what was I thinking <laughs> in, in, 
<laughs> in what sense? Well, it, the bar changes like in every bar. Yes, yes. And I, well, that's not good to say, but I needed to count. Mm -hmm. um, what sounds as an improvisation is so strict, actually. Right. And, and then I, I took some time letting go all the, the stress. And then, you know, I just have this feeling that no matter how much you prepare, you can only get the sense on, on the first uh, rehearsal with the orchestra. Okay. Not even with piano, when the orchestra is there. And then Barbara told me before, it's Wagnerian, it's a marathon. And I thought, oh, come on. <laughs> well, mm -hmm. <laughs> after the first rehearsal, I, pff, I went to sleep. <laughs> I was so exhausted. I'm but, sure. But then I started, I started just tuning in and it's so it's really equilibrium this piece because you don't get to sing full voice all mm -hmm. the time it, like the beginning you need to find the place where your voice is right before breaking mm -hmm. and but still with a resonance right and you can only do that if you can breathe with them i meditated every every time before rehearsal and of course before the show right and you also you have to have some way of i mean singers are so keyed into texts and into words and you find the meaning of a piece in in the words so often and much of the Vivier piece is written in a made-up language yes. where you have no way of touching bass so you have to find your emotional core there as well yeah does the music tell you what to express there absolutely even though I'm holding just one note but I'm listening to the chords that change in the orchestra mm -hmm. and so I don't know, when, when I heard this made-up language, I thought, this makes sense. Mm. This is amazing. Now, I understand from my producer we're going to have to wrap up and go to the stage pretty soon, but I would be completely remiss if I didn't ask you about your, contri your contribution specifically to Rites of Passage, this beautiful omnibus folk um, compendium that you're going to be performing this evening. So tell me about the piece that you contributed and, and so, how it came out. Yeah, I chose a piece that comes from the island of Kalimnos. I'm not from that island. And I think my people will be a little bit like, why didn't you choose a Pontian song? <laughs> but yet, I, I love this piece. It's, um, they sing it in the first hours when the just married couple wakes up in, so, in order to wake them up. And, and actually it says, now wake up because now the birds now they sing so it's very dear to me and actually the 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 harmonic changes and, and the chord progression in, in these songs you will never find in another greek song wow. yeah well and here i mean as we can hear all around us you are going to have plenty of live bird accompaniment yes. even even after the sun goes down these these little buggers continue to make their contributions. They are they are in it as much as any yes. of us here, and so I really uh, I'm I'm very much looking forward to this notion of again as you said this this international tribe of people who have found themselves together bound together in common cause, and so um, that's something to look forward to with uh, this evening's performance. Thank you so much for Thank joining you. us here.